deary, deary me. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well today. Good God. As I've said before, and we'll say again, what a hectic week. But there are things now that are coming out that, quite frankly, should make just about anyone scared about the current state of our country. I'm talking about situations that really are making 1984 manifest in reality. I'm talking about things that could see actual innocent people jailed. Much better. I can see now. Anyway, there are people who are now going out on these protests that have been going on across the country because, understandably, people are very concerned about their kids, very concerned about the safety of their country, but some of them just want to observe from the sidelines. And now there's an article from the Telegraph where there's a very crooked judge or lawyer that is basically saying, you will not be granted bail even though you were just a curious observer. Now, I don't know about you, but that definitely sounds like they want to control who wants to be able to put out the narrative. And hear me out on my explanation on this one. So, obviously, we have our mainstream media who are going to be going out and trying to get the pictures, get the filming done, and try to spin the, the yarn to make their narrative and what have you. Do you think they're going to get arrested? Do you think the BBC, Sly News, Channel 4 are going to get arrested? <laughs> like hell are they? I suspect the police will recognise these people as journalists, even though, let's face it, they're activists, not journalists. They're going to be allowed to do what they wish, while ordinary people, like myself, or people from channels like Reasoned, which is the first time I'm actually mentioning the channel, but I digress, or people like the people from Reason, Mart Tuzi, and other citizen journalists, they could go up to one of these protests, observe from the sidelines and film, and now the police can come and arrest them, just like that. I don't know about you, but that sounds like trying to control the narrative to me. That is why I'm a little bit scared of this. In fact, no. Let me rephrase that. I'm very scared of this shit because it gives the government and the media a dangerous level of control that no establishment should ever have. It gives them the ability to spin the narrative and basically deny all other narratives the ability to have a platform to which they have their say. And as I've mentioned several times before, that is the unequivocal definition of fascism. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. Do you really think they're going to want us to be able to report the truth on the matter? Or do you think you're going to see Keir the traitor Starmer take the hypocrite's oath by saying with his left arm up, or hand up rather, and my middle finger up, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but my truth. That's what it boils down to. The fact that we are now in a situation where you can be arrested just for observing the riots without even participating in them is a very scary precedent indeed. Then, of course, I did make mention in the past... I believe, or maybe I'm mentioning it now for all I know. I made mention of how Keir the Traitor Starmer now is charging people for online offences regarding the riots. I'm talking, he wants to claim there are people who are riling up the hatred, driving the hate, the hatred. No, Keir the Traitor Starmer, that's you doing that. That's just you using the legendary Chinese art. Oh, sorry, I keep calling it Chinese. Well, it might as well be, because it is legendary in and of itself. Anyway, they are using the legendary art of projection again. Kier the traitor Starmer, and to be honest, it, it could actually make sense this time, because he's actually being a communist. But hey-ho, he is projecting at the end of the day. 
He is projecting what he is doing onto other people because he doesn't want people calling him a traitor, a communist, and basically a fascist or a Nazi. Like, he really is, at this point, making the Nazis look like nice guys. And that really should scare a lot of people, considering what the Nazis did in two world wars. But I'm not here to discuss the Nazis. I'm here to discuss the situation we've got right now, and then, of course, Keir the Traitor Starmer. But they want to arrest people for being a keyboard warrior or whatever. But here's the thing. If you're going to go down such a, a widespread route, the way I look at it, as far as inciting all this hatred is concerned, or drumming up the violence and all that, I think of a few people who really could fit that category, Keir the Traitor Starmer. Anybody remember Mike Stutchbury? He's an Antifa wanker. He's an Antifa far-left extremist who had tweeted many times in the past, punch them, punch them, punch them, never stop punching them. He was basically advocating for violence on supposed far-right individuals. He was also, I believe he also said some racist shit about black people as well, though that one I'm not so sure on, but I am 100% on the other stuff. He's definitely incited violence in the past. Are you going to go out of your way to arrest him? No, that's what I thought as well. Or what about Nick Lowell's? A very very, very malicious, maligned subhuman being who gets his kicks out of ruining other people's lives. A man who actively targets anybody who doesn't go along with the left-wing globalist Marxist agenda and has, in some cases, cost people their jobs. He makes libelous, slanderous, false accusations against people about what they do. For example, if you're against immigration, then obviously you must be a racist and what have you. Or if you have a problem with Islam going around blowing shit up all the time, then you must be an Islamophobe and all that shit. He has often incited hatred towards people on the right wing. He's actively gone out of his way to collab with people by bribing them to basically get information that he wants to use against people like Tommy Robinson so that he can further his agenda and destroy Tommy Robinson's. <clears throat> Which is something, of course, the mainstream media are not going to want to tell you about. How is it that such a hateful little man, because that's what he is, a hateful little man and probably a traitor as well at that, can go out of their way to stir up such division and project it onto other people and yet still be used as someone as, as basically credible evidence or a credible group by the UN, by the mainstream media, including Panorama, who got exposed for this, who are used for NATO, Bearing in mind that it turned out that in the past they had over-exaggerated hate crime figures by 3,000%. Are we going to see an arrest of Nick Lowell's Keir the Traitor Starmer? No, I didn't think so either. That's the thing, Keir. You are a traitor, a hypocrite, a fascist a communist, and a Nazi. Unequivocally. And I say these things because I know it to be true. And until such time, as you can prove otherwise, you will always be called Keir the Traitor Starmer. You should be thankful I'm not calling you Keir Starmer the traitor, inciting violence, causing riots, communist, Nazi, fascist Starmer at the end of the day. Because let's face it, you're the one who's aggravating the British people. Every time there are calls for peace, 
you triple down, you quadruple down, you, you pentuple down, and you do something else to try and aggravate the people even more. It's like shaking a can of fizzy drink so violently, and then you open the top and watch as that thing practically fucking explodes. He is actively going after patriots, concerned parents, people who understand the problems of what's going on and want to report on them, people who are also concerned online and are sick of the treachery from Keir the traitor Starmer, and people who basically just want their country to be safe. While he does fuck all about the pro plasticine the Black Lives Matter, the just stop oil movements, insulate Britain, well, I can't really blame him for insulate Britain because they haven't really surfaced and that was like three, uh, two or three years ago. But it doesn't change the fact that he only seems to be focusing on the people he deems as far right rather than every person and rule equally over the land. But then we all know that he is ruling with an iron fist when it comes down to the supposed far right and with kid gloves on the left. That's no secret, though. But Keir also wanted to piss off to holiday. He wanted to go off on holiday for the whole summer vacation. I'm lucky to have one week off. And the only reason I have that off is because of events at my company. And I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to fear. Keir the traitor Starmer, on the other hand, I think he's got a lot to hide. And as I said before, and I brought this up in the past, bear in mind this fucker was one of the people who was going out partying during COVID while we were told we had to stay at home, protect the NHS, we're not allowed to go and see our family to celebrate Christmas and all that shit. Also partying while the Queen's husband was dead and she was mourning him at a fucking funeral. This is the kind of man Keir the traitor Starmer is. We need to do something about this. And what I get sick and tired of, as I said before, and will say here again, I am sick of saying we don't have five years. Because that is the cold, bitter truth. Yet some people still believe that we can do this if we have the patience to wait five years. We'll be lucky if this country is still standing after one, let alone five. Ricky Gervais has even said the country needs a revolution, as I've said before. And I'm quite frankly, I'm very inclined to believe him. I'm very inclined to say that our last chance to resolve this peacefully was lost at the ballot box, quite frankly. This was the lowest turnout. About 30% of the population turned up to vote. The lowest in history. Compare that to the Brexit referendum. And there was tens of millions of votes. Tens of millions this? No. At the end of the day, we missed our opportunity. The trains left the station, quite frankly. I don't want to advocate for violent revolution, let me be clear. I hate the idea. I hate the notion of we need to go down the violent revolution path. But there comes a time where, as I've said before, I will say it again, when you make peace or resolution impossible, you make violent revolution inevitable. And he has repeatedly aggravated the British people. He has repeatedly defied the British people. He has repeatedly persecuted the British people. How we've got 150 plus people who have been arrested for these protests. Some of them justifiably, admittedly, because some of these guys were throwing petrol bombs, bricks and all that shit and actually causing criminal damage, violent disorder, etc, etc. 
And I will condemn those people for resorting to that. 100%. I condemn them. But I completely understand why these people went and did this. I've always said that. I completely understand why these people would resort to this. Hell, I even understand. I believe this was in Belfast, though I can't remember the place off the top of my head. I believe one place even decided to take it to such an extreme of the two-tier policing that we're currently under, they decided to throw petrol bombs into police stations. Again, I do not condone this. I condemn it. But I understand why they've done it. Because they are sick and tired of two-tier policing, with literally the police putting two fingers up at us. We're sick of the traitorous establishment and the police picking sides. How they don't go after Islam when they're waving their machetes and swords and what have you around like a land snack bar or whatever. Yet, when they're the ones that are attacking the police officers as well, they can get let off without charge. One of our people ended up attacking one police officer, didn't even injure him that much, he gets several years in prison, which, yes, he should get time in prison, but it's the balance that is con the concern here. How is it that two Muller Rices can go out, punch a female officer and break her nose, and then assault a whole load of other police officers, and yet they're now being let off free of charge? But if we attack a police officer, we get jail time. You can't have your cake and eat it. Well, I can. I could just go out and get what, another one in the shop. Anyway, you can't have your cake and eat it. You need to respect the law. You need to maintain the law on both sides in a balanced and fair manner. You, police, your duty is threefold. Keep the peace. Restore the peace if it is broken in any way, shape or form, and restore order as quickly as possible, and protect the British people. Those are your duties. That does not mean you protect one sect of people, like Keir the traitor Starmer has committed himself to doing, because that would make you traitors as well. That means you apply the law on both sides of the spectrum equally and fairly. It means you do it without curry or favour. We don't see that. We see you taking sides with radical Islam and pro placocene We see you wankers and Kia the traitor Starmer take the knee to Black Lives Matter. And notice how I say lies and not lives, because they are a bunch of lying cunts at the end of the day. How sad is it as well, we see you NPCs going around with the pride flags during Pride Month or whatever it is. You're more interested in rainbowing up your fucking cars than you are doing your friggin' duty and protecting the British public and solving real crime. Oh, but when it comes to Twitter crime, oh, you're fucking on it. You're, you, you literally become one of those fucking TV nerds that basically like, we gotta get him, guys. We gotta get him. He's saying some mean stuff about me. Like, what do you want me to say? Because I'm not going to bullshit anyone, or I'll try not to. I'm not going to mince my words. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. And I'm going to say it exactly how I see it. Prove me wrong, police. But quite frankly, the way I look at things is while I condemn the people who set that police station on fire, I think, quite frankly, police, you only have yourselves to blame. Just like if anything happens to Keir the traitor Starmer, he only has himself to blame. That's the closest I'll ever get to potentially inciting violence or hatred. Because at the end of the day, it's as I said before, it's like if you've got your cooker on and you put your hand on a, a hob that's just heated up and then you burn your hand. You're like, fuck me, that hurts. And then instead of being like, I better not do it again, you're like... Oh, hey, that was fun. I'm going to put my hand on there again and get myself burnt again. That's effectively what you lot are doing. You are effectively pushing people to the point where they are like, we've had enough of this. And that's why we're seeing the disorder on the streets. 
You're putting criminals before children. You're putting Islamists before Britain. You're putting other countries who come from their third world shitholes to turn ours into one before our own damn country. And you wonder why these people are pissed off. Especially so when it's blatantly apparent that these Islamists don't even give a shit about the law and they're waving their swords and knives and all that shit with reckless abandon. But they don't get arrested. Oh, but you'll arrest someone who is concerned about the kids. You'll arrest someone who's carrying a kosh. Where's the mainstream media to report both sides of the story? Oh, that's right. Keir, the traitor Starmer's Stasi media are not going to report on the other side of the story, are they? That's why we have to do it. Because at the end of the day, if you aren't going to tell the truth, we're going to do it for you. And when they find out the truth and that you've been lying, of course things are going to go tits up for you. That's the way I look at it. But we are really increasingly close. We're really... In I can't even get the words out now. We're getting increasingly close to a 1984 Orwellian state where wrong think is punished. How people on social media can make posts that are inaccurate and they get arrested for it. How people can call the extremists and the illegal immigrants filth and they get arrested when that word isn't even racism. It's just calling them a name and they're worried about that. Isn't it funny? The left always likes to throw names at us. What about those people who did the protests of Stand Up to Racism and ordinary members of the public were just walking past and there was some NPC with this placard in his hand shouting at them, Nazi scum! What about them? Why haven't you arrested him yet? Hmm? Because that's libelous and slanderous to do that, if I recall correctly. To libelously slander a member of the British public and call them something that you have no idea they are or not. Why is he being arrested? The one good thing we can take away, though, is that Ricky Jones has been charged with inciting violence, inciting hatred against the far right. So I'm hoping that he's now going to face a significant amount of time in prison. I hope. But I suspect he's going to get a slap on the wrist. Because obviously... If you're protesting against the supposed far right, apparently to the left, that's a just cause. But when it's the other way around, oh, it's racism. It's inciting hatred and violence. Oh, you are the most evil man on earth for calling these people what they really are. Well, there is a saying. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool all of the people some of the time. But you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And these people are starting to grow wise to you. I'm sure as shit not falling for it. I'm sure as shit not going to allow you to trample over my rights. And trample over my liberties. And trample over what is my God-given right to do. You want my compliance, Keir the Traitor Starmer? You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead corpse, quite frankly. Now you just need a forklift to pick me up. Anyway, you are never going to get my compliance, Keir the Traitor Starmer. Never. You have proven to be a real dick taster. I mean tater. Or maybe I was right the first time. You have proven to be a real dick taster at the end of the day, Keir. You have proven to be a traitor of the highest order, even more so than Tony Blair. You have proven that you are a hypocrite, because as I mentioned in my previous video, I believe you, Keir the Traitor Starmer, were at least two of the protests against Margaret Thatcher when you were younger. Those violent protests which, which saw officers injured, people injured, caused violent disorder. Surely, by this logic, 
Keir also should be under arrest just on that principle alone? Or what about the fact that he is actually in inciting the hatred towards the far right? He's drumming up the hatred to basically go with his narrative so that it causes the Islamic extremists to come out and commit violence so he has the justification he needs to bring in these draconian laws and then basically rule over all of us with an iron fist, a social credit score, digital ID, uh, digital ID and facial recognition. And this country will literally become China at this point. The United Kingdom of the China Republic. What say you, Keir the Traitor? There's a star in the fucking hell. God, that, that was a bee outside. It just, some of the loudest fucking buzzing I've heard. Whew. But there is genuine fear in here of what this country is becoming. And I did not plan any of this shit. But this is what we're heading towards, folks. When you see all this shit unfold, you'll realise we don't have five years to wait. We're lucky if we have one year to wait, let alone five. Which is why I've said time and time again to Richard Inman, to Paul Thorpe, to Maya Tuzzi, I'll even say it to Tommy Robinson. I don't think we have five years to wait. I think the country will be gone before we get to five years. I think the country, frankly, will be gone before we hit two years. I think Keir the Traitor Starmer is doing everything he can to destroy this country. By hook or by crook. Or in this case, by Islamist or illegal immigrant. Islam sees Keir the Traitor Starmer not as an ally, but a useful idiot. Never forget that. They don't see these people as allies. They see them as a tool to be used. Find the right tool and use it appropriately. That's the way they look at them. Literally mashed potato public. What say you, Keir the Traitor Starmer? Are you going to wake up and smell the coffee and actually realise you're being used by the Islamists? Or do you not give a shit and you want to destroy this country anyway, regardless of if it costs you your life? Do you want to destroy this country and everything this country has spent two millennia building up to? Just for your socialist paradise? Or are you going to realise what the fuck you've done and actually openly apologise to us and fix the fucking problems? I probably know already what you're going to pick here, the traitor Starmer. But folks, this is what we have to deal with. A person who has scant regard for the British public, who cannot see the elephant in the room, and will literally bring in thousands upon thousands of migrants just so that he can keep his vote, just so he can keep his power, and he will stop at nothing to ensure that happens. Hook or by crook, as I said, he doesn't care if he has to arrest innocent people or far-right thugs. He will do everything he can to keep the status quo now and sink this country. We need to take out the trash and place it in the dumpster of history where he rightfully belongs. Because if we do not, this country will not be standing. This country will not be standing within two years. This country will be destroyed by Islamists and illegal immigrants who the vast majority of them have no legal or human right to be here. If they truly were asylum seekers, they would have claimed asylum in the first safe country they got to. But let's face it, they're coming over here because they want a piece of benefits Britain. And we can't wholly blame the migrants for this because they're just trying to seek their fortune in the best country they can, which is us. Let's face it, they got that bit right. We are the best country. And I don't care what anyone says, but they're doing it purely for monetary gain rather than altruistic benefit for the British people. That's the way to look at it.
We need to do something quickly. I don't want a violent revolution, but it is increasingly looking like it may be the only option left, as they've constantly made peaceful resolution impossible. Richard Inman may want to keep preaching about we need to win this by the ballot box. I think that as a I think that opportunity has passed, quite frankly. I really do. I think that opportunity has gone. Do you honestly think, Richard Inman, we're still going to be standing in five years? I don't, quite frankly. I am not a pessimist, but I am a realist. I realistically think this country will go to shit within two years at most. Most likely within the first year. But if you want to continue down this path, you do you, Richard. I'm not going to be sitting idly by, though, while the country falls apart because of a dictator like Keir the traitor Starmer.